Hello, this is Scott Stanley from the University of Denver. On behalf of my co-authors, I want to tell you about our new paper, Unequally Into Us, Characteristics of Individuals in Asymmetrically Committed Relationships. In 1938, the sociologist Willard Waller coined what's become known as the principle of least interest. I'm going to read it because it's not so grammatical for memorization. That person is able to dictate the conditions of association whose interest in the continuation of the affair is least. Now, in plain terms, what that means, what his suggestion was, is that the person who's least committed in a relationship has the most power. They care the least, so they have the most control over what's going to happen. They have the most power in the dynamics of the relationships. And that idea, along with the, the literature over the decades on social exchange and commitment theory, have spawned a, a small but robust literature on asymmetrical commitment in relationships. Asymmetrical committed relationships have lower relationship quality, they have more uh, negative dynamics like uh, aggression, uh, including from both the lower and the higher committed partner, and they're also somewhat more likely to break up, particularly and curiously, if the woman is the less committed partner. Now what we're doing in this paper that's uh, extending that literature and that hasn't been done yet in this literature is looking at the characteristics of individuals that are associated with being in asymmetrical versus non-asymmetrically committed relationships. We used a national sample of ours of 315 couples in opposite sex relationships. To be in the study, people had to be seriously involved. And in this case, that resulted in a sample where people had been on average together two years, but also not married. So the sample is a good sample for representing what's true for a lot of couples these days where they're not married, but they're not just starting to date. These are seriously involved relationships that have really been going on for a while on average, and we're looking at asymmetrical commitment within those relationships. One of the characteristics that, that of commitment that's been thought about, described, written about theoretically, and studied for years is the idea that people vary in the quality of their alternatives. And you, you can see how this would be related to asymmetrical commitment because a person who perceives themselves as having better alternatives is going to have uh, a sense that they don't have to be as committed to a current partner. So if they're not quite so into the partner or they're not sure and they think they really have good options elsewhere, that person has more room in their life or, or ability to kind of be less into their partner or less committed to their partner. Now, in this study, we looked at two kinds of alternatives in particular. One is, what's the overall perception somebody has of the quality of their life kind of financially or materially if they were uh, out of this relationship? And then the other we looked at, which is much purer to sort of a lot of the theoretical thinking in the field about asymmetry and about the nature of commitment, is the person's perception of how well they would do on the market, how many other people might be available to them, uh, what what are their options out there in terms of the quality of alternative partners uh, compared to the person that they're with? Now, in terms of what we found here on those dimensions, uh, we didn't find anything on the material alternatives. It was not associated with characteristics of being in an asymmetrically committed relationship. Um, however, this variable of the perception that other people would want to be with me or I have other options beyond this relationship was associated with it being more likely that one would be the less committed partner in an asymmetrically committed relationship. The other findings I want to briefly mention relate to scores on dimensions related to attachment. Those who scored more highly on a couple of scales reflecting avoidant attachment tended to be more likely to be the less committed partners within ACRs compared to not being in asymmetrically committed relationships. Which makes a fair amount of sense if you think about it, that the person who's struggling with uh, being close or depending on others is going to have a more difficult time forming a stronger commitment or, or maintaining commitment to their partner. So that's consistent with what we found. On the other hand, scoring 
higher on a measure of anxious attachment was associated with greater odds of being the more committed partner within an asymmetrically committed relationship. That also makes a lot of sense because if you imagine why somebody might stay or maybe doesn't even perceive uh, that they're in a relationship with a much less committed partner, why might that happen? You can imagine that somebody that's really struggling with anxiety about attachment may be more likely to kind of hang on to and be in for some time a relationship with somebody who's kind of just not that into them. We think this study adds to the literature on asymmetrically committed relationships, and we also have a hunch that asymmetrically committed relationships are a phenomenon of increasing importance for those that are in serious unmarried relationships, partly because the steps and stages and sort of social structures that people used to use to clearly define the nature of the commitment in their relationship before marriage is largely stripped away now compared to 30 or 40 years ago. Regardless, we're excited about this paper. We, we hope you'll read it, and we think the phenomena is a very interesting one for both researchers and clinicians to consider in working to understand and help couples. Thank you.